All right, 1970s movies. Dear Billy Burning Bush. <laughs> you know, it never ceases to amaze me. All of these years, you guys still figure out a new way to fucking make fun of me. I really appreciate it. I'm not even joking. You give me a laugh every week, so thank you. All right, big fan from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, name is Jared, if you want to read it out loud and make my buddies go ape shit. All right, I read it because you, you want to, evidently you don't have any fucking skeletons in, in your closet here. All right, love both your comedy and the podcast, especially when featuring the lovely Nia. Uh, I know you've been burning through 70s flicks, and I'm somewhat of a movie encyclopedia, so I decided to weaponize my autism for your viewing pleasure. All right. Goodfellas is one of my all-time favorites, and The Nice Guys was the best movie of 2016. I love that fucking movie. So I think our tastes are at least mildly compatible. Uh, here are a few recommendations. I'll try to spare you the super well-known ones. Oh, dude, there's nothing better than a great, obscure movie, band, uh, football player, whatever. Anything obscure that's actually good and nobody knows about it is the shit. All right. Sorcerer, 1977. You guys should write these down here, man. Uh, the most underrated movie in cinema history. Action-packed thriller by uh, Willen Friedkin. Und Wil Wilhelm Friedkin, the same dude who made The Exorcist and The French Connection, two of my other favorites. Well, shit. I got to watch that. Deep Red. No, that's not about a smarter version of me. Thank you. Uh, 1975, ultra-violent murder mystery by Dario Argento, or Argento, who also made the horror classic Suspira. Suspiria? Two years later. Another awesome one. Haven't seen that one either. I'm watching all of these. Duel, 1971. Early Steven Spielberg flick. Low-budget road thriller with some great car chases. I got to check that one out. I love Spielberg. All right, Black Christmas, 1974, the absolute scariest slasher movie I've ever seen. Perfect for morbid holiday watching if you're a blasphemous bastard like me. Dark Star, dude. Dark Star, 1974, goofy-ass goofy sci-fi comedy by John Carpenter, who would go on to do other goofy classics like Big Trouble in Little China. Great fucking movie. 1986, fucking hysterical. Um, that's got what's his face in it, Kurt Russell. My favorite thing is when he delivers that line and then exaggerate, like bites into that sandwich. Uh, Big Trouble in Little China is great. All right, The Tenant, and also so on point to make fun of those kinds of movies as they were still coming out and people weren't making fun of the action hero movies. Uh, the Tenant, 1976, early Polanski. Guy's a freak, but Christ, can he make a movie? Uh, mind fucked of a paranoia story about a man slowly going insane while shut away in an apartment. Something we can currently understand. Wow. Dude, I don't like, I, I don't like scary movies, man. I'm not into it. Like, I take the ride. They scare the shit out of me, and they stay with me. And I start walking in to places here in Baba Duke, Duke, Duke. Um, Le Samari, Le Samurai, Le Samurai. 1967, it's a bit earlier than the ones you're looking for, but I also know you're learning French. So, two birds, one stone. Super badass assassin thriller with a jazzy soundtrack. Oh, my God, that's got, it even gets into my drumming shit. Uh, sorry if I wasted your time with a bunch of movies you've seen. I haven't seen any of those. I've tried to give you some obscure ones that I really, really like. Stay safe. And get your lovely co-host back on the podcast soon. I am. I'm getting some microphones. I'm updating my little studio here. I've already ordered them. I'm just waiting for them to come. And I'm going to have, there's going to be more Nia in 2021. Um, also, you know, I think we've stumbled upon another cool thing here. Um, let's, you know, anything obscure. Top 10 obscure cars. Top 10 obscure albums. Uh, if you want to say your obscure movies. The ones that, you know, that people should fucking see and they, they, they never do. All right. Um, let's see here. French movies. Hey, Billy Ball Buster. Hey, Billy, Billy Ball Buster. 
All right. Love the podcast. I always wanted to learn French also, but all my friends convinced me that French, that the French are assholes. Like we're not. Everybody's assholes. And so are they. But then when you go over there, you get to ask, act like an asshole American and then hear an asshole French guy talking about you in his native language. And then you get to be like, I know what the fuck you're saying. And watch his little fucking little, little pocket square fall out of his jacket. Um, anyway, I might take it up again after hearing of your success. Yeah, I'm, I'm moving right along. Uh, je parle un peu le français, pas très bien. Voulez-vous aussi boire avec moi? Voulez-vous dimanche avec moi? I'm at learning a lot of those. Um, I, my, my favorite French word right now is boulevard. Boulevard. Le boulevard Saint-Michel, monsieur. Oui. Um, and everybody thinks that like French is like really like effeminate and all that shit. And I would just say, go watch any movie with that dude from the professional who I should know his name. He's like, like French, the French language is actually when it's spoken by some street thug actory dude in a movie is one of the coolest fucking sounded lang. It's just like, you know, you have that stupid when you make fun of the English accent, hey, you know, jolly good day. Blah, 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 blah. And then you watch one of their gangster movies. You're like, oh man, that sounds fucking cool as shit. So basically every language sounds cool. If it's a, if there's a badass speaking it, you know what I mean? Uh, you just got to find the movies. All right. Uh, French movies. All right. Ba, 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 ba. Um, heard you say you wanted some more French movies. I have three for you. I don't know. How, Amelie. I don't have to say it. A M E with the accent coming back at you like you're smoothing your hair. That's how I remember it. And the other one is your brother slapping you off the top of the head. Accent. I think that's accent grave. Um, A M E L I E. Cute movie about a daughter finding her place in the world. Well, maybe I could watch that with my daughter. Um, City of Lost Children. A slightly weird movie starring Ron Perlman. I love Ron Perlman. Uh, Marquis. Mar- Marcus. Marquis. M-A-R-Q-U-I-S. Uh, this one I found at the local video store in high school in the foreign section. I bought the VHS off eBay about 10 years ago. Oh, this is a cinephile here. Uh, but haven't seen it anywhere else. Good luck. It's weird. Hope you get to check out these and the fashions, the fashion of the letters. And in the fashion of the letters... I don't know what that means. All right. I'll check those out. All right. The British have the worst taste in tea. Oh, my God. Shots fired. Hey, Billy Bullocks. Greetings from Ireland. I have to say first, I absolutely love the show. It used to be the highest of my week when I was in the office. And now it's, oh, my God. You know, we were, we were talking about Winston Churchill. Me and Burt Kreischer on the Bill Burt podcast just saying how that dude was a man, the way he stood up to the Nazis. And some dude... Fucking said, you should look at his difficult relate. It, it said, it said Winston Churchill. And then he wrote, educate yourself. And it's his complicated history with the Irish. And just saying, educate yourself as a human being to another human being. Like that guy right then, it was just like, I don't ever need to meet this person in life. I know exactly this. That is one of the most self-satisfying fucking person, people you could ever fucking meet in your life. All right, you know everything. I'll try to I'll try to come up onto your fucking plane. You know, not check out. Check out this, you know, just to sort of balance out. Educate yourself. In other words, I know who Winston Churchill is, even though I've never met him. And you don't. All right. I have I have to say first, I absolutely love the show. I used to be the highest it used to be the highest highlight of my week. When I was in the office, and now it's even more so during lockdown and working from home. It really cheers me up. Love hearing stories about growing up in Boston. It sounds very much like growing up here in Ireland. I don't know how many times I've been called a fucking Mary for the slightest of things by an adult as a kid. Uh, but every, everyone rips on each other. It's more of a term of endearment than anything, and it toughens you up. Yeah, it absolutely is. Um, oh, and by the way, next if it's done right. If it's done right, it can also be something that tries to build you down and then you spend years trying to figure out who you are and building yourself back up again. But that's a different story. 
Oh, and by the way, next time you're over here, hopefully when all this craziness gets back to normal, uh, there's more to Ireland than just Dublin. Please, if you can do some gigs in... What are you talking about? I've done gigs in Cork City or Galway. I did gigs in Galway. I've gone up to Belfast. I've, I've done uh, Kilkenny. Only did it once, but I've, I've been over. I've been around. The fuck with you. Uh, face down in a Guinness? We don't drink Guinness over here. That's the shit we export. Oh, go fuck yourself. Uh, please, if you can try doing some gigs in Cork City or Galway, you won't be disappointed. Both cities have a much better audience than those superior dubs. Oh, you're all insecure because they live in the big city. Who they think? Who think they're the bee's knees? Oh, yeah, I went to Galway. I found out about all those babies you threw down that fucking well for those chicks who got knocked up out of wedlock. Yeah, it was, it was a beautiful sea, seaport city. <laughs> that was one of the best sets I've ever had. I just kept referencing that. There was some sort of fucking thing over there where these chicks who would get knocked up who weren't married, they'd be sent away in shame to this nun convent or something like that and they'd give birth and sometimes the babies would die and there'd be no record that the baby even lived and they just stuck them into like their set tank or some shit and then one day it backed up and they were cleaning the well out or whatever the fuck it was and all of a sudden there was all these dead babies down there it's fucking unbelievable religion i swear to god even though i'm starting to believe more in an afterlife again that there is something beyond this religion has no idea what it is or even understands I don't think they even understand God. I don't. Because what they say God is and what I'm seeing out here, to just use the devil as a scapegoat is really just more like you just don't fucking understand like I do. Nobody understands what's what's going on, why the fuck we're here, or what the meaning of all of this is. All right? All right, let's plow ahead here. Anyway, anyhow, I see you're getting into drinking tea. No, I'm not. I'm not getting into drink tea. I just fucking... Drink that throat coat shit so I preserve my instrument. Sorry. Um, as you probably know from your cigar smoking, you want something that's quality. The English have this worldwide reputation for their tea drinking. From tea, TV and movies, I reckon, but their tea tastes like cat piss, especially that Earl Grey shite. Uh, I, I have some family living over there, so I've tried them all and haven't found anything good is, that's even worse Anything as good as even the worst brands of tea back here. Oh, look at the Irish talking shit here. You thought we were just fucking all about uh, fucking booze and wearing those sweaters. What are they, a jumper, whatever the fuck they call them. I forget what they call them. Uh, if you can source some Irish tea, there's some Irish stores over there that stock, stock it. Or I'll, I'll even send you some if that's possible somehow. What you need to get your hands on is the pinnacle of Irish tea called Barry's Tea. Oh, my God. I got to get some of that shit. There's nothing else like it. Trust me, it's a real gem. Lion's Tea is fairly good options, too. L-Y-O-N-S. If that's all you can get a hold of. Advice on making it? You may be doing this already, but boil the kettle, and just before it's about to finish boiling, cut cut it off, and the tea bag goes in the cup first, then pour the hot water over it and leave it. Don't touch it. Don't stir. Just walk away for about a minute and a half. Come back, take the tea bag out. Now you can give it a little stir. I, this is great, great advice. I haven't heard you mention this before, but please add a drop of milk. Um, not a lot, just a drop and stir some. Stir some more. And that it your tea and oh he re- spell check here, and that it your tea is ready. I guess and then your tea is ready. Uh, P.S. Blow on the tea first and sip to make sure the temperature is good, dude. If it's boiling, I'm waiting more than a minute and a half. That's my biggest problem with tea is it fucking burns the inside of my mouth. If you drive dive straight in, you're gonna burn your taste buds and not be able to taste anything for a few days which sucks, as you probably already know. Best regards and happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Not happy Christmas. To yourself, me, and the two little ones, hope you have a wonderful day. That's great advice. Barry's tea, everybody. 